Thank you so much to Kate Neville and uh, Hannah Clifton for inviting me to present on virtual events to you today. Um, also, of course, to Berta and Rocio for their support. I had so many ideas to share with you that I thought, and I really love going deep into a subject, but it seemed best to meet you at the top of the mountain to narrate what's happening on the horizon um, of, of events. And so, yes, uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Happily, largest network of independent event producers. We specialize in creating fun and woke experiences, um, both live and virtual. And I've actually been a leader of several fringe communities that have changed the world. Sustainability back in 2006, TED, Marketplace, Startup Founders. Now, recently, after having had my own cyber wedding, which was recorded here in my home, go viral on every continent, um, it's virtual events. And yes, I think that virtual events is as big of a movement as sustainability startups and TED. So the reason why is because virtual events is not just an event that you bring online. It is a new genre of media. Events evolving as a legitimate and measurable form of media is really so exciting. Here we are in Zoom, which is kind of like what I think my space of social media was, and the next Facebook is coming. We have so much opportunity to shape the way that people connect until the metaverse arrives, which is the moment in the not so distant future when we're all in virtual 3D environments. And I've never had a crystal ball or even like would never consider myself a futurist, but I am a researcher, a technologist and a storyteller. And as history tends to repeat itself, the most conscientious way for me to show you the future would be um, as Confucius says, study the past. So let's go back 100 years in media to 1920. Frank Conrad was experimenting with the very first com commercial radio broadcast, like me, out of his home. This is a picture of his home garage. He would play phonographs and share sports updates on a fairly regular rotation on Saturdays. So you can see how like, even just the very first broadcast changes the way that we, uh, that we interact and how media evolves. That same decade, video was attached to audio and cinema was born, giving people a chance to slip into a dark room and escape reality for just a quarter. Uh, 70, 75 years ago, television was affordable enough for everyone in America to have TV in their homes, and some of the first TV shows were trying to bring the experience of radio into television. Hosts were boringly reading news live on camera. Sound familiar? So brands quickly and brands quickly turn TV into a more visually interesting place with commercial selling products attached to stories and values. And they got so good at manipulating behavior through media that 25 years later, we had to have sweeping brand regulation. Um, here you see one of the last ads of cigarettes on TV. Watch how Virginia Slims, they're conflating the women's liberation movement of the, seven, of the 70s with like glamorously smoking um, in front of their husbands, which is something that you couldn't do back then. Um, th this, was, this was censored as well as at the same time, um, there was a censorship of number of like ads that you can show to kids because Sesame Street was also coming out this time. And there were all these sugary cereals that were being like hawked onto children. So um, 30 years later, We've got the World Wide Web, woohoo! Um, birth of email, avatars, dial-up chat, all sorts of weird stuff starts to happen, right? Uh, 20 years ago, blogs make their way through social media and that ushers in content creators and new social behavior, behavior patterns of voyeurship, exhibition, and dumbed down interactions like likes, all caps shouting um, in comments, tweets, things like that. Uh, this is actually the very, very first YouTube, uh, YouTube video, in case you didn't know. Uh, 10 years ago, some mysterious guy named Ted is actually your new source of learning with people craving to connect with more meaningful content online and also in person at localized events around the world. People also start to meet and mate with strangers from the internet like it's no big deal with Tinder. So the public commons of the internet and the private space are starting to now at this point become the new normal. Five years ago, brands get regulated again as Apple starts to crack down on privacy and allow ad blockers on, it, on its phones, leaving advertisers in a scramble for how are they going to capture the hearts, minds, and, and wallets um, you know, of its consumer audience. 
One year ago, of course, GDPR and also screen time limits are the new wave of regulation as companies continue to mine people's personal data. The New York Times even, I found like this article where they wrote about how parents are like en masse hiring coaches to teach them how to limit the screen time of their children. And of course, months ago with coronavirus, all of that screen time limitation usage is just thrown out the window and we've got Gen Z growing up into Zoomers navigating their identities, their platforms, as if they're taking a stroll through the neighborhood. Even weeks ago, um, a video game called Fortnite released a new update that had 20 million live viewers at once. NBA Finals in 2019, that had things like 14, 15 million, 20 million viewers at once is kind of like if all of London, Madrid, and LA shut down and started to like go online and play a video game together. So that brings us to today. Today our platforms are limiting us to behave in the way that we want because technology is still either too utilitarian, it's too unemotional, it's too one directional. Despite Zoom's limitations, we still use it because of its multi-camera recording platform. We wanna see and hear each other more. We know that social media isn't social enough. But our tech today isn't yet designed for social behaviors because we, here in this room still need to invent those new behavioral norms. So of course, being the creative humans that we are, we use larger than life stories to work around our limitations. And this time we're crossing platforms. So for instance, this is a late night TV show with celebrity guests um, that's happening on a Nintendo Switch game called Animal Crossing. And it's The Verge called it our most popular late night TV show. Here's T-Pain as a guest. He's flipping out so excited because he was just gifted a digital crown as you're gonna see him transform. Woo um, uh, and this, this whole show is, by the way, being written by, a, 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 written and hosted by a writer for Star Wars Rogue One. So you see all these like just new, new media is blending in together. Um, and you know, it's funny, but, uh, I didn't know this, but Bill Gates is the one that said content is king. And I can't think of a bigger utilitarian tech billionaire, like nerdy guy coming here saying that, and the quote really you know, goes into saying content is where I expect much of the real money that will be made on the internet, just as it was in broadcasting. So virtual events are bringing the public comp public comments back into, uh, into broadcasting, making all of us, all of us, the commenters, the lurkers, we're now all content creators. And at its most viral moment, um, we are actually seeing that the public is, ironically, today, July 7th, we are in the midst of Blackout Day launching in America, a call to action and a day of solidarity where not one black person in America spends a single dollar outside of businesses owned by that, black people. So the people are running the content game now. So what we're seeing is a very new production process that blends movie making and TV show making, I guess, um, meme making and movement making. This means that we're also are having new collaborators. So at Happily, we have five different departments, creative production, technical, marketing, finance, people who are all specialists in events. And last year, you know, producers, installation supervisors, these folks were the top roles, our new top roles after, um, you know, after coronavirus is web developers, UI UX designers, community managers, editors, filmmakers, and streaming engineers. Next week, we're gonna start to see everyone, ourselves included, building brand new hybrid systems and business models around our newly normal quarantine lives. So our high-end productions are going to include an on-site rec recording studio. They're going to include lots of small live si local simulcast gatherings and widespread interactive participation online. Stuff we've been doing at TED really for over a decade as we moved TED from an events company into a media company. Months from now, uh, the elections are going to happen here in the U.S. and what I call, like, I don't know if this is a term, I coined it maybe? Virtual interactivism will hit its peak. Um, so stay close and really watch what people are doing to learn from the very first wave of interactive, purpose-driven content creators. They're going to tell us how the new behaviors need to be formed.
and a year from now, I think we're still going to be doing some version of the hybrid event I shared with the studio local online model, but the return to like intimate off the record digital detox events will be coming back aggressively. You're going to check in your phone at every event. Five years from now, we're going to have a critical mass of people who have adopted the Apple Glass. It's coming out in about a year or two. Um, Apple has already trained us to turn our hands and wrists into communication devices, our ears into like mini satellites, and our eyes are going to be turned into shopping carts. I can really see that like, you know, we'll be wearing glasses in, in our homes and just buying things, adding things you know, into the cart, using our phones to, to check out. And then in a decade or more out, brain machine interface, interfaces that tap directly into our nervous system will further blur the lines between what experience are virtual and what experiences are real. So in conclusion, event producers and community organizers have never mattered more. You are the new stewards of this, this new genre of media. It's up to you to learn and not repeat, repeat the mistakes of greed and oppression from media producers in the past. Use your skills and position to shift the representation, the economics, and the meaning behind the stories that we are co-creating in virtual events so that we can collectively transform our cultures into a more respectful and respectable human civilization. Thank you.